News now. Here's Mike Cheney. And on the phone with me, as promised, we have a special guest, Governor Steve Bashir. Good morning, Governor. Hey, Mike. How are you? We're doing well here. We're expecting some snow coming up. Uh, you've been busy so far at the beginning of the year with your short legislative session, and uh, we know you have a lot uh, you're going to be tackling. And I'd like to talk about one subject right now that seems to be really controversial uh, on our news page, and that's House Bill 208. Have you been getting a, a lot of uh, bipartisan support for this bill? Could you explain what the bill is and uh, the support you've been getting? Well, now, let me ask you, because when I just hear numbers, I'm not sure which one you're talking about. What, which one is House Bill 208? Okay, that's the bill where um, people on welfare may be required to have random drug testing. Okay, all righty. I, I saw that just the other day. I think the bill was just filed, and we haven't had a chance to, to really review it in detail, and that's what we're doing now. You know, I can certainly understand uh, the reasoning. Uh, we want to do everything we can to, to get people off of drugs uh, that are on them illegally. And, you know, we've got a problem in this state like we do all across the country. Uh, one of the things, uh, Mike, that we're going to have to do uh, is look at the cost of it uh, because, uh, you know, during this recession, I've had to balance a budget eight different times already, and we've cut over a billion dollars in spending out. And I've just got to look and make sure – uh, what kind of cost that entails. Um, you know, every dollar we move someplace else has got to come out of education of our kids or public safety or something. And so uh, you, it's a balancing act. And so we'll take a, we'll take a look at that and, uh, and see the cost of it. And you also want to kind of look at, uh, you know, there are some parents that, uh, that are, that are uh, you know, getting Medicaid or getting food stamps or whatever it may be, who have drug problems, I'm sure of that. Uh, at the same time, their kids uh, who get the food put on their table and, and have a square meal because of some of these programs really aren't the cause of anything. And so we, we're going to have to look at uh, not, not uh, you know, uh, trying, to, trying to tackle the problem and not hurting uh, these kids in the process. So uh, we'll, we'll take a good hard look at it and see if it, if it makes some sense. And now this is a short session. There's no budget involved, but you're tackling other bills as well. Tell us some of the top bills uh, you're wanting to work on and uh, some of the ones uh, other lawmakers are proposing that are moving forward. Well, let me uh, mention a couple of things to you. Number one, you're right. It's not a budget session, but we do have to address one budget issue. Uh, there is a shortfall in our Medicaid budget uh, because when uh, the legislature passed the two-year budget, um, about uh, six months ago, uh, they assumed that we were going to get about $238 million out of Washington to, uh, to apply to the Medicaid budget, and, and we only ended up getting about $100 uh, million. So uh, it, it's about $100 million short, uh, and I've got a proposal on the table that will resolve that problem, and we're not going to take any money out of anybody else's budget. We're not going to take money out of education or public safety or economic development. We're going to balance it uh, by moving some money in the Medicaid budget from the second year up to the first year. And then we're, the solution to this is fortunately a long-term solution as well as a short-term one. We're going to go out uh, and we're asking the private sector right now to come in and give us proposals on helping us run this Medicaid program. You know, there's a lot of expertise out there in the private sector, a lot of technology that I think we can take advantage of that will help hold down our cost, not only uh, immediately and, and balance the budget in the second year of the biennium for Medicaid, but in the long term. And I, I think this is going to be a solution that will uh, help to, to hold down costs long term uh, for the Medicaid program. The other thing that I'm very interested in, and the First Lady is too, is raising the dropout age in Kentucky from 16 to 18. You know, the dropout age, the time when a kid can drop out of high school, has been 16 years old since the 1920s. And it, it's time, I think, and all the education groups are supporting this move uh, to send a strong message to parents and to children that a high school diploma is absolutely essential for success. You've got to finish school uh, if you really want to succeed in this world. The, the economic figures are overwhelming. Just the difference, the average difference between a dropout 
uh, and a high school graduate over a, a lifetime of earnings is something like two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. And just think if if we get a thousand more kids to finish off and get their high school diploma and and enter the job market, what a great economic boon. Uh, it will be for Kentucky. At the same time, the statistics indicate that those who drop out are much more likely to end up uh, on welfare, uh, end up in our prisons. You know, it's unfortunate, but that's just the way it is, and uh, and that's costing us a lot of money. So for so many reasons, uh, it is time to raise that dropout age. We're going to phase it in. Uh, we're going to work through about a four- or five-year period to where uh, we'll make sure that every school has alternative pathways and alternative education courses. Not going to leave somebody in a classroom to disrupt it and all of that kind of stuff. Uh, we want to put them to where they'll be interested in something and interested in a course of study that will lead to a high school diploma. And also you were talking about education earlier and sometimes you have to take money from programs to, to make the budget work. There's one bill that's uh, been proposed and uh, I was wondering uh, how it's been received. It's uh, teachers uh, who have uh, get their math, their students in their, in their advanced placement math may get uh, uh, some money. Could you talk about that? Yes, they're, they're, these ideas have been tossed around now for some time, and, and I think depending upon how you approach it, uh, they're gaining some momentum. I, I, think, I think, you know, we've got some areas where uh, it is hard to get teachers, uh, and some folks want to encourage more people to go into those areas like math and science uh, uh, by, you know, holding out the carrot of maybe a little higher pay and that kind of thing. Others, of course, argue that, look, you know, I may teach music or I may teach social studies or history or, or what have you, English, and that's just as important. Uh, and I understand that. I, so it's a, it's a kind of a controversial subject, but... Uh, I think everybody's open to exploring ways to to encourage people to uh, to get into teaching and to I improve the quality of our teaching. Now, Governor, before we wrap up, we know you have a busy schedule. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Well, uh, I just want folks there in the Owensboro area to know that we continue uh, to try to get our people back to work. You know, that's really been my main thrust over these last three years. Right when I came into office, this economic recession hit us all, hit us all over the world, and we've been fighting ever since to, to pull ourselves out of that. You know, we've been fiscally responsible. We balanced our budget eight times and cut over a billion dollars in spending out and have reduced the size of government. And at the same time, we have kept our priorities of funding our K-12 through education and our higher education and our public safety and, and working on bringing jobs to our communities. And we've had considerable success there in Owensboro, you know, with the U.S. Bank and with the tobacco company and uh, a lot of, of new jobs there. You know, we certainly aren't out of this yet. We've still got too many people out of work, but we're moving in the right direction. And I just want folks to know that we're going to continue night and day working until we get everybody back to a good job. Well, Governor, we appreciate you taking some time out of your schedule and talking to us today. It's great to hear from you, and we hope you have a great day. Thanks very much, Mike. This is Governor Steve Bashir, and you're listening to Local News with Mike Cheney on the Cromwell News Network.